Carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns is a Halloween tradition, but in the small town of Canova, West Virginia, one man has turned the tradition into a must-see spectacle that includes dozens of volunteers, community pride, and more than 3,000 pumpkins. The astonishing display is the brainchild of Rick Griffith, a former mayor of Canova whose Victorian home draws upwards of 30,000 visitors each year and has affectionately been dubbed the Pumpkin House. In 1978, when my second of three daughters was born, I decided to carve a pumpkin for each of us, my wife, myself, and my two children. And then the, uh, the next year it began to grow and I filled the porch rail. Then after that it went up to the porch roof and people were responding to it. The kids seemed to love it. So it's somewhere between that moment and now it became an obsessive compulsive disorder for which I have no explanation. Griffith starts the process by hand drawing each pumpkin for the display and getting reacquainted with some old but familiar faces as many fan favorite designs make annual appearances. They deliver the pumpkins late September, or early October, and for the next three weeks, it is a labor of solitude. I'm alone in the backyard with 3,000 pumpkins, but it's kind of like old friends. I'll repeat many drawings each year, and some are new, of course, each year. And, and I have eight notebooks that are filled with sketches that I have stylized to be drawn in a way that they can be carved. And so it begins the anticipation as I get closer and closer to that date, which is generally about six days before trick or treat, and then the chaos starts. Once a pumpkin has been drawn, it is ready to then be scooped, carved, and dipped into a special solution to help prolong its shelf life and prevent rotting. Some more intricate pumpkins are saved from the saw and are made using a method known as scraping by more seasoned artisans. This technique is used on pumpkins depicting the portraits of celebrities, historical figures, and even fallen soldiers from the local area. My family comes from Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's a, a large military base there, Fort Bragg. Um, uh, my grandfather's served. Um, there's sort of a long history with that. I, I, even though I, I wasn't in the military myself, I, I have a very deep and profound appreciation of that. And it's, in a, in a strange way, it's, a, it's emotional for me as well. This has now become the most important pumpkin I've carved. If Clark Griswold is the king of Christmas, then Rick Griffith is the Royal Highness of Halloween and his magnum opus is a massive pumpkin orchestra comprised of 540 jack-o'-lanterns. That truly is the Griswold's Halloween. When you look at the back of that wall, you see 48 extension cords hanging down. Each one controls a different instrument in the orchestra, the choir, the men's choir, the women's choir, the titles of the songs, and so even special effects like with the 1812 overture at the end there are bells ringing and so we do two pumpkins one leaning this way one leaning this way and so they alternate during the 1812 overture which makes the pumpkin look like it's ringing and so we have to have each pumpkin on the right light bigger than the spectacle the griffiths home creates is its impact on the community Located in the most western part of West Virginia, on the border of Ohio and Kentucky, the sleepy town of Canova comes to life during the annual Cerrito Canova Autumn Fest, with the Pumpkin House serving as the main attraction. The largest week of B&O tax from our businesses occurs during this week. And so it has been a good way to create tourism out of nothing. No one had a real good reason to come to our little community but now they look forward to it, and we have visitors literally from around the world who come to see it, and I always joke about this. I ask my wife, what are you gonna do if I keel over dead with a heart attack and 50,000 people show up and there's no pumpkins? And she didn't miss a beat. She said, well, I'm just gonna put a sign out front that says he's dead, go away. While the house always draws plenty of new faces and is a boost to the local economy, Griffith says what he enjoys the most is seeing many of the guests return year after year. And so we've had events like 
marriage proposals and first dates and uh, even a wedding uh, that have to our eyes seem a little unusual you know this is just pumpkins because we're used to it but it's the special nature of this event that has made people have this sense of desire to see it again. I've often said, and I will always hopefully feel, that as much as I would like to produce intricate drawings and have a perfect display, I can't because it's volunteers that oftentimes make mistakes or don't know what they're doing or mess something up. And if I ever get to the point that the volunteer accidents bother me, then I need to quit because that's not what this is about. There are many pumpkin displays around the country with talented artists who do very intricate things. And we have a few of those that uh, would challenge that quality, but I don't ever want it to become like that because it's not about that. It's about thousands of people that I don't even know who volunteer their time and take pride in their work. I will often, while setting up pumpkins out front, walk past a small child that I didn't even recall had scooped a pumpkin, and that child will say, I did that one, and that's neat. 2018 will mark the 40th anniversary of the storied pumpkin house that started with just a few jack-o'-lanterns to entertain Griffith's own children. Now, thousands of people from all over the world have been captivated by the orange hue of the lighted pumpkins each Halloween. It's truly one of the must-see sights of the season. As one thinks about their life, I, I guess I'm going to be forever linked to pumpkins. Uh, but to me, it's not pumpkins. It's people.